<laughs> All right, get your mic. Let's see. Make sure your mic's getting. So yeah, you just kind of talk into it. You don't. Uh, let no. You can just sit where you are, but just give it a little work. Give a little mic check. Go hello. Mic check. Hello. <laughs> I can hear it. Yeah, I think we got you. All right. Hey, Henry McClure live with the Deacon. Hey, good to be here. Introduce yourself to the Henry McClure live show. I am Deacon Glenn Smith. Uh, my wife is a pastor of Increase Your Faith in Christ, and we are here just to try to get the word out there that we are a church of deliverance, and uh, we are in need of a building. Amen. Amen. So we're here talking real estate, and we can talk God. Yeah, we can. We can talk God on my show. All right. Yes. yes. <laughs> we need more God around. I can't get too much God. And thank you for that prayer that we, we opened our meeting with a prayer. Oh, yeah. It's my pleasure. Every opportunity that God gives me to pray, I, I try not to welch on it. Every Oh, I like that. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like a man, all you got in life is your word, right? Right. You can right. never welch on your word. Ab absolutely. Right? Absolutely. I like that welch. You know, because, <laughs> um, and that's the way I look at my life. It's like, um, uh, if I tell a guy I'm going to help him, I got to help him. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I think you absolutely. can get a signal for me if I don't want to help you. I mean, yeah. so, some of you might know that over time. Well, yeah, you know, and then another thing is I try not to, uh, if if I'm not going to help you, I, I want to let my yes be yes and my no be no. I don't want to put myself out there and do it when it's time to do the work. You know what I like about no? It's a complete sentence. It needs no explanation. Absolutely. So, uh uh god brought you here to find a real estate deal yes sir yes sir america's real estate company right here <laughs> <laughs> no better place than here right oh man thank you <laughs> i appreciate you so look we got to find so you've got 10 members right today yes sir and but your flock is growing and yes, you need sir. some elbow room yes sir absolutely that's good uh uh the place where we're uh, just left, and there was another church in the building, and uh, I think the new members uh, sometimes got that wrong and ended up in the other building. So I kind of like to have a place where we can call home. But you as, gotta have a place you call home, as you know that the church is is God's house, and so. We would just like to have a place we can have keys to go in when we want to and leave when we want. Yeah. You know, when the service is over. A so, place to hang your proverbial hat. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, look, I'm, uh, as real estate deals go, this is probably not the biggest deal I've done, but it's an important deal. Did you know I ran for county commissioner? I did not. You didn't know that? No, I didn't. And I voted. You did? I'm so sorry. No, I how do you know? I might not have been on your ballot. Okay, okay. That's Depending good. on where you live. I ran for District 2 County Commissioner. Hmm. Uh, and you know what I did? I said I was going to do? And you got to keep your word, right? Absolutely. I was going to give up my real estate license so I could uh, work without a conflict of interest. Uh, I, I don't know if that's the best idea in the world, but you would know more about the well, real estate. Well, the thing is, uh, when you're in a governing uh, a position of power and authority like that, you're, you've got access to a lot of information. Yes, sir. And... Uh, so, like, uh, hey, in the real estate business, it's not so much, you know, like a squirrel or a shiny object. It's a deal, and it's payday. Yes. Yeah. But so I was going to work for my salary. You know, it's uh, sixty grand, and that's 
to some people, that's a lot of money. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And so uh, I was going to say, uh, all right, for this period of time, I'll uh, pay my penance. I'll see what it's like to live on 60 grand. You know, right now, I mean, I live on Social Security. Yes. And uh, that's a humble number compared to some of the real estate deals you can make. Yes, sir. The thing about commercial real estate is it just um, one day chicken, another day feathers. (laughs) (laughs) I get it. Yeah. So... (laughs) You know, if you get if you get a nice big hit, you got to be a little more frugal with your money, and never, as they say, never catch on chickens before they're hatched. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, don't even count the eggs. Before. No, before, <laughs> don't count the eggs before they're laid. <laughs> You're right about that. And so, well, anyway, uh, so uh, what? Let, let's just talk real estate for a second. So what would be the uh, an ideal space for you? Well, I, I like to get into a, uh, an area where uh, the, the ground is fertile, so to speak. A right. Lot, a, lot of, a lot of people may be living in the area, but none of them are attending church, or nor do they know about Jesus uh, and what he stands for. You know, he gave up his life so we could live. And I think that word has got to be preached all over the world before it's over with. Uh, God said, go out and make disciples and his word to be preached in every corner of the world. So it, it, uh, just a area where we can uh, minister to uh, not just one race of people, but for all races, if they if it's possible. You know, I've always been colorblind. Yes, sir. By the way we grew up, by, by the way we were raised, do you know that my grandfather integrated the school? Is that right? Yeah, his name was James A. McClure. And so he never believed in separate but equal. All right. Yeah. And, and But he, he, he was a judge, and he happened to be on the school board. It's like people that want to get involved with government, the best place to start is uh, school board or city council. Those are the best place to start. And we do need to get anybody that voted for the hotel off of city council. (laughs) But that that aside, (laughs) just praying. I understand, yeah. (laughs) But um, so um, I've... um, and that's one thing about the Lord. You know, he's colorblind. He is. He uh, If it's in his image, yeah. Then he's got a he he's a chameleon. <laughs> he created he created all of us in his image. Yeah. Know? And even though unfortunately some people uh tend to uh judge different races and ethnic society but uh if you cut us open we bleed red we all look the same on yeah the we do we do god, god god looks at the heart and not the skin color well okay can we take a step back yes so where were you born i was born in east texas yeah what part uh little community called decap texas only three only about three thousand people in the host all right so uh, what'd your mom and dad do in decal my parents i had older parents so they yeah had, i did too so my my like father, how old were they when you were born my you want me to be honest with you yeah and i want you the to, only way to be yeah what are my you asking for was, my father was 50 years old when i was born well he was a very yeah. he was a virile man <laughs> Uh, and he how was her, he lived to the ripe old age of eighty nine? That's good. And my mom, my mom, uh, she was uh, um, thirty four when I was born. Wow, he married a young gal. Yes, he did. And uh, they raised me and my brothers and sisters. How many brothers and sisters? I have three brothers, and I had three sisters. Oh, 
y'all did, and did lost, they got married or did they die? No, I have a deceased sister and a deceased brother. Yeah, death's hard one to put up with. Yeah. Yeah, I've got, I've seen a lot of death, even my own. <laughs> really? Well, yeah, that's how I got here. I uh, transcended on May 2nd, 2015 by the hand of the Lord. That's why I'm here. Amen. Took Amen. away my desire to use drugs. Amen. I like alcohol was the best. That was the most reliable drug I had. And I can I, I consider that a drug. Amen. Well, and a quick coffee. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but I was drinking coffee the other day when I was running for county commissioner. You know, because I'll tell you, you know what the hardest thing about this is? Was going door to door and talking to the voters. And man, it make you sad. It, I can imagine. It's the disconnect. I mean, if you want to do missionary work, go run for office. I mean, the disconnect between the voter and the elected official, it's so... Because what these guys do in the county commission and their city council and a lot of forms of government. Right. It's so out of touch with uh, us, uh, just people. Absolutely. I kind of, I kind of meander. I kind of meander in my uh, podcast. You notice that? <laughs> <Yeah. That's laughs> but right. I like to know people. Yeah. So my mom and dad. My mom, I think, had me when she was thirty-five. So my dad would have been thirty-six. Uh -huh. And they adopted three kids before they had me. Allie, or uh, I think, I can't remember who's first. I think it was Allison and Robert kind of came together, and then John came in, and Allison, Robert, and Robert are dead, and John lives in Erie, and um, he's a real solid citizen, a good friend. We're, we're not, we're, um, you know, we're not, we don't call each other a lot, if ever. But, you know, he wrote some nice stuff about me. And John's been out in Colorado minding his own business. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You got to respect that. But he's a hard worker and he's retired. And I love his wife. She's a really nice lady. You, you know, uh, a lot of people frowned on uh, uh, siblings that are adopted. But God promises us an inheritance. Well, why would they frown on it? Ah, uh, you know, I don't know. Who's frowning? Who's doing uh, all this some, frowning? Some of the siblings frown on uh, the way that uh, the inheritance is passed on to each one. And they, if, if you are biological, you think you are entitled to more than the ones that are adopted in there, but God doesn't look at it. No, I, I get it. I get it. You, you know, he... My dad, my dad didn't have a lot at the end but he divided it by six back right. then because you know he had i have a half brother out there running around and then uh and then his second wife had two kids uh, okay I get but it. he just divided by the the kids not you know not everybody was around when he passed and then mom you know my mom had a lot more money in but at the very end it was gone and uh, I, I, I ended up inheriting a home that, um, and it, it might have been a little, um, I, I ran across her will the other day. Oh, yeah. yeah, and as a matter of fact, I was thinking about sending it to my brother, John. But I told my mom, when uh, my daughter and I decided to move out to the lake, or, or mom needed help. Yeah. My stepdad fell down the steps and got all banged up, and he was paralyzed. And uh, and my mom had macular degeneration. I, I I honestly don't know what she saw. Sometimes I think it was uh, an act. <laughs> you know what I mean? She had macular degeneration. Some days she'd go, "Man, you didn't shave." I go, "Why can you see that?" <laughs> <laughs> but um taking care of my mom, I said, look, you, you're, she gave a lot of her money away while she was alive. Yeah. And some, some of the, uh, her grandchildren and great grandchildren saw more money than any of us. Right. But that, that's another story. 
Okay, because I digress. Now let's talk about real estate again. You're gonna have to reel me in when I go down these rabbit holes. Okay. But I like I'll knowing try you. My best. Yeah, that's, uh, that's <laughs> difficult. Yeah. So, um, what? Brought, let's just go back one more time. What brought you to Topeka? Uh, what brought me to Topeka? I heard you mention a little while ago uh, that you were uh, you had a drug problem. Yeah. And you had an alcohol. Well, I didn't have any problem consuming them. <laughs> well, what brought me here was I uh, I had a drug problem. All back, right. Back in Texas some 34 years ago. And uh, Do you come I, up here for Minigers? No. No, I didn't even come up here oh, for you, treatment at oh, all. Oh, you just had a drug problem <laughs> and ended up it. in Topeka. Yeah. Now, that, that answers that. <laughs> I uh, came up here trying to run from a drug drug. But problem. everywhere you go, there you are. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, uh, do you know you cannot run from one? Yeah, so, I know. So uh, uh, someday I'll tell you about the miracle. Someday. All right. Uh, but I came up here trying to run from a drug habit and almost, almost went back to the penitentiary. <laughs> uh, for for a drug problem in the state of Kansas, but God, but God, you know, uh, I I was I went to court and uh, before I went to court, did I you talk to a lawyer? Yeah, but did you receive some mercy? Oh yeah, I, I mercy and grace from God. Oh, man. absolutely, and uh, and I was trying to find a lawyer that would uh, keep me from going back to the penitentiary and everybody was turning turning me down, slamming doors in my face because I didn't have any money. And uh, finally I talked to one lawyer that said uh, I can't defend you because you don't have any money but I'm going to give you the best advice I can give you. And I said okay. Uh, I'll listen. So he said, uh, when you go in the courtroom, make sure you're dressed appropriately. Yes, sir. Don't uh, go in like you don't have any kind of education. Uh, given the opportunity to speak, speak like you are uh, really defending yourself and you're intelligent in doing so. And so I took it as took it as his advice and when I got in the courtroom and the judge gave me the opportunity to speak for myself, I uh, did just that. I, I said to the court, I said, judge, I do believe if you send me to the penitentiary, it would be a mistake. He said, well, what do you mean by that? I said, sir, I have two full-time job doesn't give me a lot of time to be in the street committing crimes raping your daughters shooting your sons and this sort of thing what i'm doing i'm doing to myself i have a drug problem i need some help for it and uh at the age i am if you send me to the penitentiary by the time i get out it's going to be hard for me to get a job. And uh, then you got crime because I have to have money. You know, and I, and I talked to him like that. And he said to me, he said, sir, you certainly know how to handle yourself in the courtroom. But I have no choice but to sentence you to two years in the Kansas Department of Correction. So I just dropped my head and walked outside and sit down on the bench. And shortly after that, uh, the prosecuting attorney walked up to me while I was sitting on that bench and he said, I don't know what kind of effect you had on the judge, but if you hear me out, just hear me out for a minute. I want to let you know that you certainly sold yourself to me 
It's my job to send people to the penitentiary. That's how I feed my family. But if you listen to me, I'll go back in the courtroom and ask for a pardon on your behalf. Who's speaking of pardons? Yeah. What a day to be talking about pardons. And if you'll promise me that I'll never see you in my courtroom again, I want to tell whoever is listening, from that day to this one, I haven't been back to his courtroom or anybody else's There you go, man. Uh, That day changed my life. And it was by the grace of God because I prayed before I went in that courtroom. And just like they said, you know, God might not show up when you think he ought to, but he's never late. (laughs) He's never late. And so that's a great, that's a great story. I love it. And. And I went to treatment one time, been sober ever since. How long? That's been 30 years. Wow. 30 years. Man, you're my hero. So I've got a little over nine years. But my my lifetime, my lifetime, I wasn't always drunk and carrying on. You know, you can function as a drunk in the real estate business and some (laughs) businesses. Maybe maybe even being a lawyer. (laughs) <laughs> uh, yeah, I once heard a, a drunk say, uh, when he, right after he ran up on the curb in his pickup truck, he said, man, I must be sober. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, uh, man, that's beautiful. So, you didn't want to go back to prison. You carried yourself right. The, you sold the prosecutor. And, uh, well, it's because you're believable. You're, sit- it, it's, you're it's sitting awesome. here. You're sitting right here. And anything you tell me, I'm going to believe you. It's all by the grace of God because uh, during that time I was homeless. Yeah. I was sleeping in vacant houses, be, being run off by landlords yeah. the next morning. And now, by the grace of God, I have a home. I have a wife. And I'm, I'm and this, you're a deacon. It's, it's, it's all by the grace of God. And you're a deacon. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't take that lightly. Oh, that's cool. You know, I do a show in here with a fellow named Marshall Barber. And his mom was a deacon in my church. And uh, I'm an Episcopalian. Have you ever heard of them? Uh, I, uh, King Henry VIII pulled away from Rome when uh, the Pope wouldn't grant him a divorce. Yeah, in about 1465 or 1435, somewhere in that range. I don't know exactly. I like a church started by a Henry, even though it was divorced. <laughs> well, okay. And so um, you uh, would deliver a great message to young people. You would uh, been there. It's the been there, done that message. Yeah. And... Uh, isn't don't don't you just see some people that have so much talent wasting it because they're wasted? I mean, absolutely. You just want to shake them, and you know I've I've been bad about going to meetings. Well, because I don't have any triggers. You know what? When you have divine intervention. You, you know, I have yeah, you got it. You got you got a different deal. And there again, like, oh, hey, there's Henry again. He's skating again up to the top. You know, uh, apple polisher up to the front of the glass. But, um, but I, I, I have trouble going to the meetings because of the. I just feel the pain of these people, you know, and it it hurts. Well, that's another thing I want to do. Also, I, I would like to start a recovery group inside the church. Why not? If I'm able to uh, land a building where we can worship, because there's a great need. Well, I'll go. I'll I'll go to your meeting. All right, absolutely. <laughs> you got Thank a you. deal, man. <laughs> I'll give a speaker. I'll be a speaker. Yes, sir. My uh, cohort in crime. Has got, uh, I think, like 46 years of uh, sobriety. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. I know a lot of people that have had such long runs of sobriety. And, uh, you know, out of the blue, my daughter just quit drinking. 
Yeah, well, yeah, because <laughs> shit, she saw her mom and dad, so she figured she'd get ahead of the curve. But no, she and she she didn't. I never thought she had a problem, right? But uh, what I what I had trouble conveying to her was the miracle. You know, it's the miracle of being saved. Yeah. And healed. Yeah. You know, so, but you know how it is with women. It's got to be their idea. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. <laughs> but um, what I tell her now is I go, you're going to have a 26-year jump on me. And she's really sharp, a business person. Like the other day at Thanksgiving, uh I'm doing some cooking, and uh, she came down from Kansas City, and she's on the phone. She's got some issues. She's in property management, and she had some issues with the on-call guy, the maintenance guy, and uh, I just looked at my little girl doing business and how she handled herself, and I was so proud. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, all right. That's a chip off the old block. Yeah. <laughs> well, in a good way. Yeah. In a good way. Yeah. You're, you're proud of what you brought into this world and the way she's carrying I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell one other little story real quick and then we'll get back to real estate. So um after my miracle I got on the internet and I started looking up looking up about alcoholics and what AA's all about. And uh so I worked the steps, you yeah. know, just on my own. Well I'm an alcoholic, I might as well do it. You know, right, right. But one of the steps is where you confess your sins, basically, to one person. And uh, we took a road trip, and uh, I said, "Look, Topeka is a really small town. Yeah, it's got a lot of backbiting and backstabbing people in this t- town. So I just want to tell you the truth, and then that way." When somebody's backstabbing me, telling you one of the true stories, probably, about me, you can go, uh, (laughs) yeah, my dad told me that. Mm -hmm. Get it all out there. I couldn't think of a better person to to know. Because that way she, I don't mind her judging me a little bit, right? Well, you know, he did that and went through that and here we are now. (laughs) You know, a, a point of reference. But, um, all right, let's talk real estate. Uh, we got to find, and what we really need to do is we, we need to find a benefactor today. We really do. Right. We need to find somebody that's got some space. Let us get into it. Let us build the church up. Let's get some money in and then, you know, join the church. And then, then we'll get moving and pay later. Pay a little, you know. These are very tough deals. I have a church for sale there on Huntoon. I think that's how you called me, right? Yes. And uh, I got to get 350000 out of that church. But it's not really a church. It should be a house or an architect or a lawyer, you know, like a, uh, or even a real estate broker yes. could be in there where you have uh, your home. Because th- there's, no, there's no difference between my, my life my home life and my professional life. It's just, it's life. This is what I do. Yeah. And so uh, the parking there is, is bad. And uh, it's, it's more, it would liken itself more to, it's got to fit into the neighborhood. But my friends, the Orthodox Church, Father Nikolai, he's got, we've got some land out there that we got to develop. And, uh, but in the meantime, we got to get you up and going. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you're right now, are you a homeless church or do you got a place to go at all? Uh, right now we are uh, having service from the community center on 21st Street. Uh, uh, what's the name of it? Uh, the community center on 21st in California. Okay. That's where we were. No, is it the Highland Crest? Uh, yeah, Hillcrest. 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 By the pool. Forgive me. That's okay, you're forgiven. Yeah, right there by the pool. That's where we are. Hey, um, we get that pool going, you can have baptism. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and make it fun. Many baptisms. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so that's... Well, I'm sorry I missed your uh, wife earlier. 
Uh, did she? I thought she was with you in no, the car. She didn't, she didn't come by with me. She wasn't. No, the first time, even. She, no. Oh, okay. She didn't. She wasn't feeling good, actually. She got to take that D three. Yeah. Vitamin D three. That's uh, some good stuff. I'll uh, let her know. I've become I've become a disciple of Doctor Gundry. Gundry was a heart surgeon who uh, uh, wants to put heart surgeons out of business. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. It's like uh, it's yeah. like you, that's a deacon. You want to put sinners out yeah, of business. That's a good deal. Yeah. Put them out of business. But uh, he says we should all be living to 125. And I, I I believe it. You know, if we if we didn't have all the uh, other stuff they add into the soil to raise the crops and the beef and the pork and whatever, we probably would live a long time. That's life. what uh, uh, Bobby Kennedy Jr. wants to fix. Yeah. Working for the big Donald. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Trump's not the end all as far as people go, but he's surrounding himself with good people. Yeah. I mean, that's what a leader does. You know, yeah. everybody's got shortcomings. Right. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, uh, if we did find a building today, what? We, let, let's talk about the elbow room. What do we really need as far as a building? What? I mean, we understand a church, but it helpful. It'd be helpful to have some bathrooms and. Yeah, we have to have some facilities, uh, you know, and maybe even uh, it would be nice if we had a ramp in case we got some. People that were handicapped, handicapped, and that sort of thing. But definitely, most. Definitely. Have you ever talked to the people at Victory Church? Victory. Victory Church. Is that? Uh, that's on. Is it Sixth? Street? Yeah, it's out there on Sixth Street. Uh, you, you know, they got a new. Um, they got a new facility down on Adams. Yeah, that's all right. Um. Fifth and Adams down there by Amtrak. You know, that's where I live. So, no, I haven't. I haven't talked to them, that, but I didn't know they had a new Well, facility. yeah, they got a new facility, but they have the old facility, and I don't think they're preaching on Sundays. But maybe they'd be the type of church that would help you out. Hey, Jimmy B., if you're watching this, uh, one of the parishioners watches some of my shows. Oh, did I tell you we're going live out on Facebook? Just now you're telling me. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Henry McClure live. <laughs> Good to be here. <laughs> oh, oh, man, I, it's automatic. Yeah. Yeah, it's automatic. So I got a guy now. I got a guy now uh, that will download my Facebook lives and then put them out on YouTube and doll them up a little with a little advertising and search engine optimization. Oh, that's great. Yeah, we're getting modern around here. All right, all right. But Victory Church, um, I'll talk to them. They're, the the guy that owns the building that started the church lives right across from that church out on 6th Street. Uh, you do that for me. I would certainly appreciate it. And then if I, if I could get to talk to him myself. Yeah, I'd rather you talk to him. You know why? Because you make me a believer right here. Uh, well, that's good to hear. No, no, yeah. Sundays, Sundays, it's all in who delivers the message. Yes. yes. Yeah. But I'll tell you one but, thing but, that's but nice. Sometimes I have to be preached to. You do? <laughs> Absolutely. Sometimes, you know, this this is a, this, 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 this thing of spirituality, uh, sometimes we get, uh, well, how do I want to put this? You know, you get spiritually tired, and so you need to hear the word from other, from other. Yeah, I, be I believe that. Yeah. So, so um, you know, I'm more of a Holy Spirit guy because, you know, when you you're saved by angels, you know, you <laughs> you know they're taking their direction from the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm glad to be here today. And you've been diligent about calling me and getting in. I got a little behind with uh, some of my uh, real estate duties uh, running for office. I'm just glad you uh, took the time to uh, 
let me speak with you and we had this conversation and and hopefully it, good things will come out of it you know so uh, we got to do some fundraising for your church um, i'm all i'm all for that you know and so uh, i'm just i'm just glad that well so but is the community center deal is that on a short fuse it it is but you oh okay I forgot. You just don't feel at home. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you got other activities in yeah. the community center. And on Sunday morning, there is, uh, I guess, youth basketball in there. So it could get loud in the building when we're trying to uh, have service. But won't let that bother us. Uh, you, th- you look like a guy that'd be hard to get riled. <laughs> yeah. I, I am now. Okay. <laughs> there was a time when you could rile me up real easy, but God made a change in my heart. So, you know, with that change, I'm, it's kind of hard to rile me up now. You have to really push the wrong buttons, a whole lot of them, just to get me out of the character that God put me in. So, I mean, I give it to him. He, he says all the time, it's not your battle. This battle belongs to me. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm learning that. Yeah, the old the longer I walk this earth. Yeah. So. And I'll tell you, after uh, nine years of uh, being clean and sober over nine years, almost ten, man, I look at the universe a lot differently than I ever have before. That's good to know and good to hear. Yeah, because I. That was one time in my life where uh, it seemed like God didn't exist. But I got to have him every day, every minute of every day now. You know, uh, I, you know I was talking, I did a real estate deal with some Buddhists. And, um, and I've told this story several times on the show. But anyway, um, uh she had this land that I was uh, that I ended up selling to the Orthodox Church. All right. So the Orthodox Church, they pulled away from Rome, or Rome. They the way they look at it, it goes well. Rome pulled away from us <laughs> in eleven hundred, yeah. and uh, the Pope. It seems like uh, much like the Episcopalians, but for different reasons, had had. The Pope was uh, becoming all too powerful. And, uh, you know, they, they're, uh, the Orthodox hierarchy of the church is so much different than the Roman Catholics. Right. And, um, but anyway, um, the Buddhists sold to the Orthodox, and the Buddhists that owned the land, she said, uh, I was nervous about selling my property, and I prayed to God. She goes, but I just prayed to God. Yeah, she goes, she says, but I felt bad about it. (laughs) (laughs) She goes, because I don't know God. Right. And now all of a sudden I'm in trouble, and I need help, and I'm going to ask God. Absolutely. That's the right source to ask. And then she put her hand on my arm. And she goes, then you showed up. And like it was like a charge of energy. The Holy Spirit ran through me at that moment. Right. I mean, the hair on my arms was up. <laughs> my hair was standing up. And I looked over at the closing agent, Sherilyn, out at Alpha Title. And I go, did you feel that energy? She goes, look at my arms. And they had ghost, she had goosebumps all oh, over yeah. her arms. And that was probably the most memorable closing I have ever had in my life. What a time. Yes. Uh, I can remember several times experiencing that. A lot of it was from hearing the word of God, being preached, you know, and addressing it to my life. So, yeah. You want to know the most friendly church I've ever been in? What church? It was when I lived out in Los Angeles. I lived in Long Beach, California. 
It was the Crystal Cathedral. Remember Robert Schuler? Yeah. I went out to his church. My dad was a big fan of Schuler, and dad came out to visit and uh, hung with me for a while. And uh, we went to that church, and they were just so nice. Uh, and it's probably the biggest church I've ever been in. It's just huge. And, if, hey, I hope you come back. You know, they ask the newcomers to stand up, you know, if you've never right, been. Right. And no, I've never been. Well, they were just so nice to you and welcoming and just made you feel like part of the club already. All right. All right. That's that's the way it should be. You know? So so do you take communion at your church? Yes. All right. Yes. yes. You know, I'm an ecumenical minister at the Episcopal Church. You know, so uh, certain times, you know, I can... Uh, I can participate in the communion uh, during the service, and I also could give somebody their last communion. And uh, if a, if the priest tells me to go to somewhere, you know, like to a hospital, I, I can give communion. You know, I'm actually licensed. Well, yeah, that, that's, that's one of the good things about it. I mean, uh, you know, one of the jobs of a deacon is to go and visit the sick and to administer uh, communion to those that can't get to the church, you know. But Jesus don't care when you do communion. He said, just whenever you, it, when you think of me, uh, do this in my name. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, Communion is very important. I, I believe that wholeheartedly. Uh, he died for it. Well, okay, so we've got to find my deacon friend here a, a home. Yes, anybody out there listening, please help us find a home where we can worship and and uh, glorify God. Uh, because he is the reason that we are here right now. You know? He's the reason for the season. He is the reason for the season. Yeah. All of them. We got a, <laughs> we got a birthday coming up. <laughs> this Christmas. Yes, sir. Yes, we sir. say Merry Christmas. Yeah. And we don't want to get that twisted because it, we celebrate celebrate Christmas. Christ's birthday. I don't. I don't think he was born on the twenty fifth of December, but that's the day we celebrated. What day was he born? I. Uh, I. I won't. I won't. Quote yeah, you. I understand. I, I won't quote you a day because I don't know. Well, the thing about the Council of Nicaea was uh, uh, in three hundred twenty six. Yes. You know when Constantine uh -huh. decided to change the rules. Yeah, it'd be tough to remember 300 years ago, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. But I, you know, I appreciate that. Yeah. But what does it matter what day's morn? No matter. Yeah, it's like I always say good morning to people any time of the day. It's one of my favorite times of day. So good morning, <laughs> you know. So it doesn't Absolutely. matter. Absolutely. I, I like that. You know, not everything's etched in stone. Right. But uh, I, I'm down with the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I'm down with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, since I've become to know God, my life has changed tremendously. And I want to share that with so many people that are lost until God calls me home. You know, something that, uh, one thing that I don't believe in is political correctness. You know, and I think that was a... Uh, that was a big stick to get people to do what you're told. And um, so um, if I tell people I voted for Donald J. Trump, well, if that hurts my real estate business, so be it. But most of the people I work for, I mean, number one, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. But it seems like I work for a lot of Trumpsters. <laughs> well, so what am I worried about? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, it. And anybody that wouldn't like you because you've got God in your life, well, that's okay too, you know? Absolutely, because 
I'm not so what are we like worried about? Area, right. what's making you mad. Exactly. <laughs> well, I've had a good time. I feel I feel like uh I feel charged up. You got me all wound up. Well, I've enjoyed it. Absolutely. I've I've enjoyed it from start to finish. I hope this ain't the last time. No. We, we will talk. You know now how to get in the office. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. And uh <laughs> I had my challenge, but I... yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, this is Henry McClure live, and any uh, any last thoughts about your real estate deal? Just keep that in mind. Help us find the building, and keep God first, most of all. There you go. You heard it here, Henry McClure live, and as they say, Amen. Amen. I love you, man. Thank you for coming in. I love you, too. Henry McClure Live. Thank you, Mr. Henry.